Hi everyone, what we have here is Lionel's latest rendition of their 442 Atlantic, this one in Boston and Maine. Come along with me right now on Real Toy Trains and let's check it out. In 1902, Alco had supplied Boston and Maine with 41 Atlantics. By 1939, all of these locomotives had been retired. These were pretty decent locomotives, weighing in at about 178,000 pounds and having about 22,000 pounds of tractive effort. Here is a rare photo of one with a snowplow. Pretty cool. Okay, so as stated before, the Atlantics have four wheels on the lead truck, four tractive wheels, and two wheels on the trailing truck. This model has a legible builder's plate, some nice walkways down the boiler, an air compressor, more nice walkways, some great numbering. The handrails on the top run all the way down the locomotive. We have a nice smokestack, a couple of sand domes, a bell that does ring, not on its own, some brass pop-off valves and a whistle. Coming to the front of the engine, you can see you've got a fake dummy coupler installed, which can be swapped out for an O-gauge style coupler. You've got some piping here. The walkways aren't too bad. You can see that you've got classification lights that are also bicolored, an operating headlight, and number boards. The boiler does not open like most legacy models do. Coming to the back of the locomotive, you can see that it's got some nice detailing, added on grab irons here, a nice walkway. The back head is decent. It's got some nice gauges and valves that are painted. The gauges do not light up, but that's okay. If we pan down right here, we can see that it's got some other added on detail, the piping, that's pretty nice. And also the wireless draw bar that you can see that does talk to the tender. There is the locomotive fired up and you can see the firebox glow. Looks great in my opinion. The cab light's on and it does give a good look of realism. Over here to the side, you can see that it does have a nice window. The windows do not move however, but that's okay. Coming to the top of the engine, we've got some nice details. The dynamo looks great, the whistle, sand domes, and the bell does swing like we said before. Now, one of the weird things about this engine is, if you look at the whistle, it actually is removable and it's held in by a magnet, as you'll see here. I'm really not sure why Lionel would do this. I mean, if any of you guys know or have seen this before, please put it in the comments below, but it's pretty cool. Um, it is held in place pretty firmly with the magnet, so it's not going to go anywhere. But I had touched it, and it was a little loose, so I said, eh, maybe it needs some glue. But it is held in securely. And at the front of the locomotive, at the stack, this is where you're going to add your smoke fluid for the smoke, and also for the whistle steam effect. Moving on to the tender, you can see it's got nice... Steps on the bottom, separately applied grab irons over here. Nice rivet detail, a beautiful logo on the side. It's got typical Lionel Legacy trucks, which are nice. It's got another separately applied grab iron and step. And then you'll see underneath this cap, it does open. And what is under the cap? Well, there's nothing, once again, no switches or controls. And at the front of the tender, you can see it's got some decent details, steps on the sides. It's got the draw bar down below, the grab irons that are separately applied, a decent walkway, the coal door, and also a nice coal load up top. Actually, I'm not sure what Lionel did with this coal load, but it really looks good. We don't have any huge pieces of coal like you'd see in some other models. All the pieces are nice and uniform. It looks great. At the back of the tender, you can see the steps that we had talked about. It does have a couple of cut bar, which is nice. It has a nice add-on ladder. It has a nice headlight, which the number boards light up. 
the bicolor classification lights, which we'll see working in a second, and the door for the tender that does open up. Okay, so turning the locomotive over, I hope you've got some good acrobatic skills or you've got a nice cushion like I do. You can see the controls for the engine. So you've got Bluetooth under here, you've got smoke on and off, run program. Again, make sure you've got a nice soft cushion or an engine cradle. The rear truck is nice. You can see it moves back and forth freely. And you can also see that the coupler drawbar is separate from the rear trailing truck, which is nice in helping this locomotive navigate curves. If anybody's wondering, this engine is also equipped with two pickup rollers. Flipping over the tender, you can see that it also has two pickup rollers on it and a speaker. One single speaker, but that doesn't stop this engine from sounding great. Okay, just a quick demonstration of the bicolor classification lights. You can see they were green, they went to white, back to green, and also you can turn them off if you so choose. And it's the same story at the back of the tender. Red to white, back to red again, and off. Something else that I really like what Lionel's been doing lately is their idle sounds. Let's have a listen and see how it sounds. And here are the five whistles this engine comes loaded from the factory with. She's fired up, let's take her for a trip around the layout.
Okay, train fam, that about wraps it up for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I bought this model at BNF Hobbies at Wakefield, Rhode Island, and I will be adding their phone number in the description below. Have a good one, and thanks for watching.